All right, so thank you all for joining us today. My name is Stephanie Garami, and I'm the Marketing Communications Manager here at Onboard. Um, a little bit about myself, I work on all mar all aspects of marketing here at the company, and I've been working very closely on this webinar series. Um, the purpose of today's webinar is to inform you how well lifestyle search and listening search work together, um, and having both on your site could um, lead your company to have a Welcome everybody to our second to last webinar in the series. Uh, this one is how lifestyle and listings work together. And I know, you know we've had a couple webinars in the past month or so. One was separately about our lifestyle search and uh, one was separate, we had another one about our listing search. And those were a little more specific about some of the, the real benefits, uh, how they work, things like that. And what we wanted to do is just kind of pull it together because we feel that these two products together work extremely well uh, on, a, on a website. Uh, there's a lot of uh, benefits of using one and the other um, rather than separately. Um, so I'm just going to go through some of that. You know, if you have any questions, please let me know at the end. Um, some of this might you might have seen before, and, and I'm going to try and touch on some different points as well. Um, so we'll get started now. Um, you know, we just want to look over the agenda real quick. You know, we're going to touch on, on some of these things. You know, where's the, the disconnect? Uh, um, have some points on where the disconnect in the, the real estate search process on the home buyer's end is today. And I just go through the benefits of each, but I want to walk through some good implementation examples uh, that we have as well. Um, you know, highlight, I, I will touch on some other things, you know, we know that half of home buyers choose neighborhoods based on convenience to their job. And it's obvious for, you know, why they do that. You don't want a long commute. Uh, you want to spend more quality time at home, things like that, all lifestyle considerations when looking for uh, a new home. So, you know, that's something that knowing that those you know, I'm sure everybody already knows those figures, but, you know, knowing that, we want to make sure that people can uh, talk to that situation. They can search for that type of information on the website because, you know, the website is, is where everybody is going to go um, first for the most part. I mean, it's not 100%, but we're looking, you know, 90, above 90% of people are going to start their search online. Um, you know, 77% consider commuting costs either very or somewhat important. Again, another reason why, you know, not just searching for a home in an area uh, within, you know, you can search by zip code or a neighborhood or things like that, but, you know, I, I want to, you know, search by a specific commute time. So all these things are extremely important. Um, people are more likely to compromise on the price of a home than the quality of a neighborhood or commute time. Again, I think a pretty obvious one, uh, you know, I, you're going to find a lot of people who, They'll give up that extra bath or that extra bedroom to live, you know, maybe in a, a neighborhood that has high-performing schools, or you know, they already might know. Uh, maybe they live in the city now and they haven't had kids, but they have a lot of friends who moved out to the suburbs, uh, and and they know the neighborhood. They know the you know the type of people. They fit their lifestyle. Maybe it's you know people that are into the outdoors and they like hiking and walking and biking and all of that stuff. So. You know, looking for that and finding that is going to be very important. And, and of course, you know, ultimately you need to search for the home. You need to uh, look at listings and photos and, and property details as well. So, you know, they, they kind of all tie in together. Um, you know, I'll, I'll just go through this uh, quickly. You know, I, I touched on it before, but I, I really can't emphasize it enough, um, you know, how websites are structured today. And you'll see here, they're pretty much structured how a database would think. So, you know, let's query on certain on certain fields within a file, and 
or within a feed, that type of information, but they're not structured on how consumers think. And you know, that's kind of the hard thing to do. You know, you Google has done a great job. You know, you can type in a question and, and get answers back. But do we have that in real estate yet? Where you know, I want to search by some of these things. I'm I'm thinking something, or you know, I I have children. Schools are important. Um, so let me find. Ultimately, let the end goal be for me to find listings that are in um, or properties that are in these areas. So it's not at that point yet. Um, on a lot of places, there's definitely you know a lot in the real estate industry where the talk has come of this, and um, companies and agents and brokers have done a, a great job of of moving towards it. But you know, I don't think it's fully there yet. You know, there's some markets that that do this better than others as well. Um, so where is the disconnect? Uh, you know, I think uh, consumers, you know, looking for um, during the home buying process, they can't find neighborhood information on site. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to, uh, let's say, an MLS site or I go to a portal or I go to an agent site and I look for listings and this is great, you know, and I found the perfect home, but I want to find, uh, I want to do my research on the neighborhood and I, I can't find that. So. You know, I'm going to go out, I'm going to jump off to Trulia or Zillow or uh, City Data or, you know, any one of those sites that may come to mind or I may Google a neighborhood. Um, but, again, the fact that I was pulled away from the site uh, to find this neighbor information is key. You know, it, it, and that's where, you know, the next point, you know, you must search for properties first is, is with a lot of these, um, you know, portals or, or sites as well. Uh, and home buyers typically want to narrow down their neighborhoods first and foremost. I know, you know, when I was looking for neighborhoods and during the home buying process, or when I was looking to move, it was, you know, let's let's drive around some of these neighborhoods. You know, I, I know the name, but um, you know, you really want to try and do the research on it first. Um, and I didn't, you know, I knew, okay, yes, I'll reach out to an agent once I find something, but. You know, I know what I want to look for, so, you know, I, I want to do it myself, and I think that's how most consumers feel nowadays. Um, they definitely feel that the agent is extremely valuable in the process, but at a certain point. Um, you know, that brings us to the next one, must rely only on agents for information. You know, and sometimes I think you might have to talk to one or two or three agents before you kind of feel that connection and they, they really understand so I'm saying I'm looking for this, and you know they're they're thinking in their mind, well, I have a great house and it's here, and oh yeah, but there's there's schools sort of close by, so you know I think you know by it helps both agents and consumers kind of enhance that relationship uh, between one another. Um, websites typically provide one method um, listings, but not the lifestyle search or neighborhood info. And, and that could go either way. You, there's a number of sites out there. You can go and you can find just a lifestyle search. There's portals that provide this type of information, whether it's a walk score, um, you know, or just other uh, different type of portals. It's great, you know, search for areas. Um, but the key is really, you know, they're, they're a great lifestyle search site, but, you know, how can that ultimately lead to uh, searching for properties or, you know, converting a lead from an agent standpoint. So, you know, I think all those together, you know, there's, it, it, it's, it's kind of discombobulated from a consumer standpoint on, on how it works. And, you know, I think even two agents might feel that way because they want to help uh, consumers get their information first and, you know, help them during the process when they're walking them through and narrow, narrowing down these choices. You know, agents a lot of times don't want to, drive a, a home buyer to 20 different neighborhoods before they narrow down to five and then they narrow it down even further. So um, again, it can help both sides of, um, of the transaction. So here is just a typical website flow for home buyers. You know, you're, you're going to search for areas based on your preferences, um, or I'm sorry, how the website flow should be for home buyers. So, you know, I know, let me look for, in the New York metro area, I want, um, you know, pet friendly. I have two dogs, so I, I want to live near dog parks. Um, I want to be near everyday conveniences. I want to, you know, have a, a, a two-minute walk to stores or a close drive. I want to have that all close by so that I don't have to worry about commuting uh, all the time. 
So I want to narrow it down that way, and then you know I locate the right neighborhood or city or town or whatever that might be um, doing my research. So I can look at the community, the schools, what the points of interest are in the area, what the market trends are. Is the uh, area trending up and down in the recent home sales uh, and things like that? And you know, once I've narrowed it down to five, or, you know, somewhere in that area, then I can search for listings. And you know, that really just helps me. Okay, you know, I see that this agent or broker is uh, has these listings. Let me reach out to them, and then that kind of aids the conversation. I can say, or you know, home buyer can say, okay, well, you know, tell me about these neighborhoods. You know, I found these listings, and these neighborhoods seem to fit my profile. And an agent might have further insight into how that works um, or into how that neighborhood or, or town is and you know you may find out some further information from the agent but uh, you've already made the job easier uh, for both of yourselves. Um, so quickly just the benefits of lifestyle search and uh, I'll, again I know I've touched on these in the past. Uh, you're giving consumers what they want so they're able to find their best place to live. It's not and um, you know, you see a lot of stories, the best places to raise your kids, and the best place to raise your kids in New York might be Scarsdale, but uh, if you can't afford to live in Scarsdale or you don't live in, in downstate New York and you're in western New York, that really doesn't do you any good. So, um, you know, you can narrow down through your criteria and work through like that. Um, it integrates with any existing site. So if you have an existing site, you can easily uh, put lifestyle search on there. Um, and, and the IDX search portion we'll talk about in a minute as well. Um, but a couple of these points, it helps you create a unique destination site. So it's not, um, you know, a, well, there's a lot of canned sites, a, a lot of same information out there. But the goal for a lot of agents and groups isn't just, okay, let me get somebody to my site and you know, the ultimate end goal is, is for them to become a client and, and you can help them sell a house or buy a house but bringing them back to the site even afterwards. Or even maybe they're not ready right now. Maybe I know I'm ready in a, a year or so, but um, drawing the traffic to your site, you know, they're going to think of, okay, well, you know, this, I, I remember being able to find what I need here and, you know, thinking of that agent or broker in the future. Um, there's, there's not just one way to implement, you know, for those of you on the phone that have the technology resources there's so many different things that you can implement, and it's across different categories within a company as well. Um, you can do editorial pages. It can help with your marketing aspects uh, on any marketing programs that you might want to run as well. Um, and I think at this point, too, you know, it's been kind of a buzzword, but we still don't see a lot of people implementing lifestyle search or they have their own version. So, you know, I think, you know, you're, you're – you can become a market leader. You can become the first one in your area to implement. It's kind of that first mover advantage. Um, so that's the, the lifestyle search. Now, the benefits of a, a listing search. And when I talk about listing search, um, I'm referring to um, you know the type of IDX search where you have some of the different capabilities that are are now available in the market that might not exist through a canned or hosted solution. You know, a lot of those are just, okay, pop this into your website, you get a little iframe, and you allow consumers to search. But you're not, you're not really getting any of the data that, of what consumers are searching on or things like that. And um, really, our listing search or, you know, a lot of the good listing searches, they're going to have things available like um, building out drive time search, uh, a drive time, can you, that type of search, you know, I want to live within 20 minutes of my work. Uh, you can do a search based on that. Um, you know, searching for properties that are within a specific school district, that's extremely important. Uh, you know, we hear that all the time. So, you know, searching within specific neighborhoods or, or towns. You know, again, all of that, that on how consumers are searching, not just how you set up your database or um, your structure in your back end, but um, allowing that great consumer experience. Um, you know, quick and easy expansion into new markets. So I know, you know, there's a lot of companies that have problems with, uh, you know, they start out in, let's say, two, three markets, and they have, you know, two, three MLSs, and their market expands, they merge, um, you know, 
they just become members in, in other MLS areas. And the, the tricky part, obviously, is MLS data can be, um, it can be different from market to market. So the key is, you know, with, with one centralized web service, you're able to take advantage of being able to um, quickly add these new feeds without having to worry, worry about mapping a lot of the data points or integrating it. You can quickly just turn on, uh, okay, I need Bay Area Association of Realtors feed and you know, let's click switch on the back end. Um, so, and that comes into the not, you don't need to worry about data standardization. You know, really, uh, companies should, should let, you know, those I think a lot of brokerages should let other companies handle that at this point because you know some of the key things that they need to focus on are what can I do to keep agents happy or agent retention or creating, uh, making sure that they're getting the leads in from the, the website. So creating that experience is just really focusing on the internal energy elsewhere that's needed because you know we all know we're doing uh, two, three jobs um, at once. Uh, and again, easily integrated into existing solutions, and I think we brought that point up, up before. Um, so, you know, really how lifestyle listings can work together. So, you know, lifestyle search, you know, we know it's being demanded. We hear a lot of uh, great positive feedback and have a lot of people that are able to implement it. Um, but I think one of the key things is attracting and keeping home buyers on your site longer. Um, that's kind of the overall goal, right? How can I do this? Because if I can bring them to my site, um, keep them there, uh, hopefully that will tran translate into sales and into the dollars that we're all worried about. And I think by tying these two things together, right, making sure that I don't I'm not just doing a listing search and then going off to other sites to do my research, but I can do my research, then I can look for my properties, and then I can, you know, reach out to agent, you know, whatever agent has that property, or reach out to the brokerage for more questions. You know, maybe I, I see something about a neighborhood uh, that I don't like, or, you know, I can still reach out to the agent and broker, and it still furthers the conversation. So I think that's why having them together is a great experience. Um, the other thing is really improving your SEO. Um, a lot of this, um, these two products can help you do that uh, in a lot of different ways. And, and SEO is also extremely important. You know, you look at the popular search terms in Google, and if you're in, um, you know, Westchester, it could be Westchester Real Estate or Westchester House Listings or things like that. Um, you know, it could be San Jose or you know, Cincinnati, whatever that local area is, you always want to be first. And, you know, that's a fight for that, and I think these two products can help you accomplish that goal as well. Um, creating a seamless experience for the consumer. And, again, that's that um, step one, step two, step three, making sure that you're keeping them on the site, um, not linking off. A lot of sites still, um, you know, will link off to different portals because, um, you know, these portals, you know, whether take Yelp, for instance, you could put Yelp access their API and put their data, but, you know, ultimately Yelp wants that consumer on their site. They want the traffic. They need to add revenue uh, and things like that. So the goal isn't really, um, it, it's to help you slightly, but ultimately it's, you know, they're trying to pull traffic away from you. Um, so help agents save time over the entire home buying process. So really, you know, if I'm an agent, I can see, you know, what are people searching for on the site? Are they always searching on, um, you know, Tribeca or um, something like that? You know, even in smaller areas, you might think, I know exactly what my consumers are searching for, but, you know, being able to really look and see how, how people are searching neighborhoods and, and maybe they're you know, you think that they all want four-bedroom, two-bath house, but you find a lot of people are searching for a three-bedroom, one-bath house. That could kind of change your an agent's marketing process um, or, you know, thinking of how they approach the market as well. Um, but then, you know, easily, because you have some of this information, um, it's converting to a lead, right? It's the ultimate goal. Uh, well, not ultimate goal. It's that middle step to, you know, signing the contract uh, with the home buyer or seller. So, you know, 
I think that's where uh, all of these together, they kind of, um, you know, are, are some great things that you can benefit from um, using these two products. Uh, the problems faced by brokers and agents. Um, and I think this, this first one is really, can't be understated. They spend a lot of time doing research for clients. You know, over the years, we've talked to a number of agents who said, you know, I spend time going to 10 different sites and pulling information from, you know, all these different sources into reports for my clients, and I have to do it for 20 different neighborhoods or towns or, you know, 20 different school districts. And they do. They spend an awful lot of time uh, doing this information, and I think uh, allowing some of the footwork to be done by the consumer who actually wants to help do some of the uh, footwork is, is, will definitely help. Um, you know, they drive around numerous neighborhoods, and I, I'm sure if there's, you know, some agents on the phone, you'll find that problem. Uh, you can spend on one aid, on one client, you might spend six months, and numerous hours in the car looking at, you know, places that, you know, you've seen over and over, and, you know, you, you still can't um, satisfy the client completely. Um, capturing leads from the website. So, you know, what's the best way to do it? Some people have that. Um, uh, registration process where they want to capture the information. Um, but I, some people have also found that the more efficient way is to allow consumers to go through your site, work through it, um, and then transfer that to a lead and have some, some of that um, search information available as well. Um, keeping home buyers on their site, no linking off. And again, key, because once you have a consumer that links off or a home buyer, you're most likely going to lose them, and you could potentially lose them to a client in, I'm sorry, a, an agent or a broker in the same market. So, you know, really making sure that you're keeping them on your site is going to be key. Uh, so I'm just going to go through some quick examples because I think it's good to see how, you know, these kind of work. And, um, you know, our clients are really still working on refining this process of, uh, you know, what's the best way to implement both and in, in creating that great user experience. And, uh, you know, some, some have done a good job now. We have uh, clients in development who are, are really, they spend a lot of time um, and, you know, do, do the market research and get the feedback from the, the clients on exactly what works and, and how best they can do this. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to go to, so um, the the first one is um, Daily News, New York Daily News, and I know they're not uh, a broker or an agent, but I think their implementation is very good. So you'll see over here, uh, they kind of start the search. So if you want family friendly or fun, hip, and trendy, you know, again, pick your criteria. Uh, what's important to you. They've done a, a bit different than most of our clients. You can see they're a little bit more limited in what they have available. But again, I, I think it's still, um, you know, very efficient. And, you know, they return the results here. You know, I'm just showing the, the first two uh, neighborhoods. Again, they're, they're obviously focused on the urban area, so they're going to show neighborhoods. But um, it doesn't have to be neighborhoods. Again, it could be city or towns or, or zip codes or things like that. And, you know, here's where I can see, okay, so City Island is number one based on the criteria, but how does the individual school score break down with, against Riverdale? You know, and, and that type of information. And they do allow that linking. So I can, my next step, okay, so I want to, you know, let me, I don't know anything about City Island. Let me learn a little bit more about it. I can look at the full neighborhood details. Or, okay, so let me see. That makes sense. I know City Island. Let me look at some of the properties in the area. And you can see how they link to the recommended properties. And what they've done is, you know, here's some of the full, you know, these two screenshots here show exactly the, uh, what they've done in building out the neighborhood um, detail pages. And there's, there's a lot here. They do a little bit of a write-up, which could be done by agents and brokers, too. Agents know the local market, so they might want to put their own information in here and, and, and put their write-up and, you know, showing what the points of interest are 
And then, you know, what are the people like? So what's the population breakdown and, um, you know, the housing breakdown, housing stability, things like that. So a really great job. They've uh, generated a lot of traffic and have gotten good SEO um, from building some of these pages, too. And, um, you know, one thing I don't show here, but you can actually view properties by clicking on there. And, again, that links out to a, a listing search. Um, the next is Coldwell Banker who uh, kind of, you know, they, they do that search, you know, allowing the user to search on about 10, 10 different criteria. You'll see some of them, you know, amenities, plenty, fresh air, Times Square. Um, and then, you know, I search and I get my results here. And again, they kind of do that reference. So, you know, um, uh, Old Town, which it should be Alexandria. But um, I think that's a typo. So they have, you know, you can see how fun, hip, and trendy it is, or the arts and leisure, and, and how these compare to uh, the other areas. So again, a, a great, uh, a lot of information here. And um, from there, you're able to link to, so you have, you can view properties for sale, or you can click out to neighborhood landing pages. And again, um, a quick write-up. But a lot of information here, you know, school, points of interest, uh, and information about the housing market as well. So a lot of great stuff that you can see. Um, and then here are the results where they link the properties for sale. And because ultimately that's the goal, you want people to look at the listings. And I can do that right from here. And, and these markets actually don't match up. It's a, a different screenshot, so I, I do a, um, don't want to confuse anybody. But, you know, again, then I can start to do my research and I can reach out to uh, the, you know, if I'm, I can reach out to you if you're on a, a broker site, you can reach out to the specific agent. Um, so some good stuff. Um, here's another client who has implemented um, lifestyle and uh, listings. And I don't, I don't show the lifestyle and listings, but, you know, I basically got to this area uh, from the lifestyle search, and you can see I'm on a, a property page. But here, here's your call to action. Um, I want to reach out to this agent, and um, you know it's right up front. So again, um, a, a great lead there. Um, so just in summary, I, I think it's important to recognize that you know these are tools that consumers are uh, are definitely demanding. Um, it's not just your same old listing search anymore. It's not just the bed and bath. You know, provide a search for listings by commute or creating your own boundary. Let somebody draw a freehand search. There was, I think, Long and Foster was in the news, uh, Inman News were doing that. Um, they've had that implemented on their site where, you know, I can just go in and let me draw a, a funky little area because I want to leave out this section of the county or something and I want to search for listings that way. So um, a lot of um, a lot of customization there, um, but also with regards to the um, lifestyle search, it, it, it's a type of tool that consumers are looking for uh, that we've seen a lot of benefit for. So I, I think tying the two together is a great way to enhance your uh, your website and user experience. Um, so I think that about covers it for you know listings and lifestyle. I think we just really wanted to point out that um, you know we kind of talk about these um, products separately, but it's good to know that you know they can be used together because you know real estate is listing search. It, you know it's all about the properties and and what you can do. So you know make sure you know you can do it different ways, and maybe it's not even lifestyle search, but it's making sure that you have um, um, the, the ability to provide listing search and you have a lot of this other information available as well. And just, you know, making your consumer and their potential home buyer happy uh, is the key thing. Um, so just want to know, um, we do have a question, but I do want to know, uh, next week will be our last webinar on the top five data points that make a difference. And I think, you know, we hear a lot about data and we talk a lot about what you need to have on your site and we have some clients that have done a great job with uh, what they've done. You know, Market Leader would be one of them. They've um, created some great reports that have 
generated a lot of good feedback in the market. Uh, we do have a question, though. Um, so the, the question is, do we work with individual agents as well as brokerage firms? And um, we do have a reseller network that um, our agent, that agents can, you know, utilize our tools from. And, you know, we have a list of um, clients that we can definitely forward to agents. So we do point them into uh, directions, you know, typically that, um, you know, where they can utilize a lot of this data and the tools that we're showing on here. So, um, yes, we can definitely, if you reach out to us, we can definitely point you in the right direction on, on where you can take advantage of, of some of this stuff. Um, I don't know if there's any other questions at this point. Um, again, here's some information, you know, just if you wanted to reach out, um, a phone number and an email. I do appreciate everybody joining, and I hope you, you've been able to just take a little bit away. And if you wanted to continue the discussion about this or anything else, we'd be more than happy to uh, speak with you. And we'll hope to see you next week.